Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Cyric and today I'm going to show you a totally complete step-by-step -step beginner's guide on how to start mining Reptorium with the Ghost Rider 1.2.4 CPU miner. I'm seeing a lot of comments on my last video of people struggling with this new miner because the layout of some things have changed. So I hope you guys find this video helpful as we're going to be going over pretty much everything regarding the miner, including pools, hash rates, tuning, and some special arguments you can use. Timestamps are in the description if you're looking for something specific. And before I start anything, just a heads up, this guide is going to be catered to Windows 10, but setup should be pretty much the same on Windows 11. Oh, and I'm not going to be covering anything regarding Linux in this guide, sorry about that. So to start, first thing we're going to go to is Reptorium.com. This is the official Reptorium website. We're going to hover our mouse over Downloads, and then you're going to click CPU Miner. And this will bring you to the official GitHub page. Now, as you can see, there was a recent hotfix. Uh, this is for Alder Lake CPUs. So if you have an Alder Lake CPU and you want to try mining Raptorium with it, uh, use anything beyond 1.2.4.1. And in order to get this miner, what you want to do is click on this bottom one here, CPU Miner Windows.7zip. As you can see, I already have it downloaded here. Chrome does tend to block downloads like this, especially for coin miners, but don't worry about this program having any malware or anything like that in it. Source code is available for this right here. Once you have your miner downloaded, go ahead and extract it. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to keep on my desktop. And when you open up the folder, you're going to see another folder and three items. The bottom one right here, this is the readme. This pretty much explains everything you need to know regarding arguments and such. There's quite a different variety of parameters that you can use. And at the bottom here, you're going to see what kind of CPUs work with which instruction set. Now, fortunately, with version 1.2 of the miner, the software does a pretty good job of detecting which CPU needs to use which instruction set. So you shouldn't have to worry about which one to use. And if we exit out of this, now the two things that we're really going to be messing with here is the CPU miner batch right here. And this is what you're going to be using to actually launch the miner. And the second is the configuration file. It's now a config.json file. And to open this file, you can either use Notepad to open it, or what I like to use is Notepad++. A link will be in the description of where to get Notepad++. So we're going to go ahead and right click and edit Notepad++. And you should see something like this pop up. Now to start on what all of this is, the first thing, the URL, this is going to be the pool that you're going to be connecting to. There are a few pools to choose from, but the ones that I currently recommend is rpool.net and flockpool.com. I've used the supernova pool before, and it's a good pool. I didn't have any issues with it. I just prefer to use rpool or flockpool. In my example, I simply have rpool.net set as my primary pool. And if we move down here to this next argument, this is the URL backup server. If anything happens to the pool that you select on the on your primary here, what the miner will do is it will fail over to another pool of your choosing in order to keep your computer still mining coins. For the second one here, I have flockpool.com as my backup. And moving down here to the user parameter, this is where you're going to be copying and pasting your wallet address. As you can see, I already have mine already copied and pasted in here. If you don't have a wallet address, please check out my complete guide on Raptorium in order to set up the wallet and get yourself your own wallet address. And for the end here, .r1, this is going to be the worker name that you're going to be using. I simply have mine set to r1 just in this example, just because. If you have multiple mining rigs, this can be a really good way to keep track of each rig going to the same address. And the password parameter here, as you can see, this by default is just x. You can just leave that the same. The algo parameter, we're going to be using the Ghostwriter algorithm. As you can see, it's already in there by default. Now, the thread count is a little bit interesting. So my processor is a 28-threaded CPU. But the reason I only chose 26 is because I still like to use my computer, even though it's mining. And leaving a couple threads for your operating system to use keeps your system pretty stable and not super duper sluggish. Now, moving on to the next argument here, this is where tuning comes into play. Tuning is essentially an optimization function to get the most hash rate out of your CPU. The default tuning process takes about two and a half hours, and the tune full option takes nearly four hours, but the tune full option should give you a higher hash rate. We'll get back more into what tuning actually does. 
in the tune config argument here. This is if you want to have multiple tuning files, then you can select different names in this field right here. And moving down further, no tune and force tune do exactly what they sound like. If you want to overwrite your tune file, you can simply use the force tune parameter and that'll automatically overwrite whatever tune that you currently have in the folder for the minor. Or you can use the no tune option, but I always recommend tuning as you do get quite a substantial amount of hash rate from it. And moving down further, we have benchmark, stress test, and quiet. You shouldn't have to use benchmark or stress test as benchmarking can easily be done with just mining. And stress test should really only be used if you're looking to find thermal limits on your CPU. Now quiet mode simply reduces the amount of output from the miner. I recommend leaving this to false. Now that's pretty much it for the configuration file, but there is still some other things I want to go over. So once you click save and exit out of that, when you first start up the CPU miner, you're going to notice a few things. The first one is, is getting administrator privileges to access MSR. To fix that, it's extremely simple. All you do is right click the CPU miner batch and then click run as administrator. MSR helps a little bit with hash rate. Now another thing you probably notice here is, is huge pages. I've gone over huge pages before and nothing's really changed, but to go over this again, all you really need to have in order to get huge pages working is a pro edition of Windows. If you don't have this, there is another workaround that you can do to get the group policy editor, but I'm not going to go into detail of how to go about this. Please do your own research on that. So once again, this is going to be for Windows Pro users. And all you're going to do is you're going to click Windows S. That'll open up the search bar. And then you're going to type in gpedit.msc and press enter. This is the group policy editor. And what we're looking for is we're going to go into Windows settings and then security settings and then local policies. And then we're going to click on the folder user rights assignment. And if I open this up just a little bit more, if we scroll down, the option that we're looking for is lock pages in memory. Now I have already done this before, but I'll go ahead and just remove this just to show you again. When this window pops up, all you're going to do is click add user or group, and then you are going to be typing in your account name, not your desktop name. Please don't get the two confused. In my example, it's going to be Cyrix, C-Y-R-I-K. I'm going to click OK. It'll list your name in this format. That's totally fine. And then you're going to click OK. Now, in order for these changes to actually take effect, you have to restart your computer. But because I've already done this operation, I shouldn't have to, just for this example. When you go to start up the miner again, you're going to see huge pages set up successfully. Now getting back to the tuning process, once again, the tuning process takes anywhere from two and a half hours to nearly four hours. But before you start your miner for the first time, there's a couple things I recommend. The first thing being to close out of as many background programs as possible. Remember that we're trying to get the highest hash rate here. And by freeing up resources on your computer, your CPU has more to work with. And the second thing, I cannot stress this enough, do not move your mouse. On Windows systems, you can see almost 10% performance lost just by moving your mouse during the tuning process. This information comes directly from the miner developer. So if anybody's going to know, it's probably him. And another thing, as you can see with this tuning process currently, You'll see the hash rate is starting to fluctuate quite a bit. It's totally normal for the Ghostwriter algorithm to fluctuate a lot in hash rate. The 24 hour average is what you're looking at for a true hash rate of your CPU. And once the tuning process is complete, it will automatically start mining to whatever pool that you selected in your configuration. And that's pretty much it. There really isn't that much more to the CPU miner. It is a brilliant piece of software. So props to the miner developers. I'm seeing a lot more people get into Reptorium mining recently. The difficulty for mining Reptorium has gone up substantially in the last month or so. So if you see that payments are pretty low when it comes to Reptorium, that's totally normal. Depending on your system as well, it could also take a while to get a payout to your wallet. So don't freak out, just be patient. As long as you're seeing accepted shares go through with the miner in green text like what's on screen right now, you should be reporting a hash rate to a pool and you should see some coins soon.
anyway guys i think that's pretty much it for this video um thank you so much for watching and and i really really appreciate all the subscribers it seems like you guys are really really liking the reptorium content here sorry for the lack of uploads as well i actually got covid recently i would like to spread out to other coins a little bit more so please let me know in the comments of what you guys want to see next anyway guys that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one peace